morning. What's going on, baby girl? We got a baby yet? What's going on, my brother? Is there a baby yet? We're listening to Gospel Truth. Everybody clap your hands. Good morning, Sister Cheryl. What's going on, Pastor White? I see you. What's going on, Karen? I see you, Minister Brown. No baby head is out. All right. So we almost there, man. The head is out. That means that the head is sticking out, or you just see the top of the baby head. Good morning, Laura. Good morning, Mr. Kim. We'll give everybody a moment to come on, man. It's a great morning. Great morning. Uh, got another granddaughter that should be here. The head is out. So we have, we got half a granddaughter. So. Hey man, let's go ahead and cut this off. Uh, hey man, hey man, good to see you all. Good to see you all. Uh, uh, good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, uh, just pray for a picture, the picture. Uh, Cause we just trying to figure out this stream yard stuff, man. Trying to get the cap. Man, what's going on, Miss Rosa? Uh, so just kind of pray with us as we make adjustments. I'm learning how to use these. Uh, different outlets or whatever to try to get us some better quality, but I like the regular Facebook Live camera because it's just a more clear picture. But we'll figure this out. Um, I'm gonna get with one of my brothers, uh, part of our ministry man, help me out with this, get this figured out. But uh, I hope everyone, let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. Father God, Lord, we thank you uh, just for being such an awesome God. Father, we ask you right now to give us a word on this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, just a free house cleaning next Sunday. Uh, we will be at the Sycamore Park Elementary School next Sunday, but however, due to kind of want to kind of play it safe, we will not have church on fifth Sunday. So until further notice, we will not have in-person churches on fifth Sunday. We will make sure we maintain uh, what's going on, Brother Jalen, a week, two weeks in between every time we have a service just to kind of see, you know, we worship together, make sure people don't get sick or whatever. So we will not be having church on fifth Sunday this month. We'll be doing it in the basement. I'll be giving a word in the basement. Uh, also, uh, uh, if I haven't spoke to you, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, so uh, God is good. And um, good morning, Pastor Brown. I see you. Uh, so we're just looking at um, right now. Uh, we're waiting. Just pray for us. Uh, pray for my one of my kids. Uh, we're waiting on this grandbaby. My daughter has been in labor since Thursday evening. Thursday evening. And it's what? nine o'clock and she's still this baby still ain't here so she Thursday, friday saturday so four and a half days um uh three and a half maybe four days of being in labor my wife's been there since friday five in the morning so uh yes i've had the house in a king size bed to myself yay uh <laughs> but i miss her i miss her but uh good morning mary but we just gonna continue to pray uh pray for the safety of the baby safety of the mother uh so and i'm and i'm just blessed and ecstatic because that that get, god has increased my territory uh as far as my family dynamics so i i feel blessed to have uh nine grandchildren so i i'm i just feel blessed and i'm ecstatic uh i'm i'm very ecstatic uh so let's get started so you might be saying what is the recertification of the map of the kingdom map. What is the recertification of the kingdom map? Okay, let's talk about this. Let's go to Romans 10 and 9. Romans 10 and 9. Uh, Romans 10 and 9. Uh, and I want to start with the ninth verse. And I'm going to kind of talk about it, but I want to read the chapter first. And I want y'all to kind of keep your Bible open. What's going on, Pastor Davis? I see you, man. Good to see you. Uh, so let's go to chapter verse nine, Romans chapter ten, verse nine. So, for Moses write about the righteousness which is the law. The man who does the 
wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. let me go back, that was five, that's five, man, that's five, I'm sorry, let me go down, verse, verse nine, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe your heart with that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture said, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the Lord over all is enriched to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So just for a few minutes, I want to talk about the recertification of the kingdom map. What are we talking about? I believe as pastors and preachers and teachers of scripture is that there are some things that we have to at least revisit every year. Amen. What's going on, Taisha? I see you. What's going on, Sister Kim? Uh, I think we should preach about tithing at least once a year. I think that's something that we have to talk about. Uh, but I also think the plan of salvation, when we're when we're expecting our, our, our disciples who are up under us or people in the church as Christians to go and search, uh, say to other people and tell people about Jesus, I think it needs to be some type of training and some type of certification. Matter of fact, let's be honest, at our jobs, some of us have certifications that every year we have to be recertified. Amen? You, know, you may know how to do the job, but your job is requiring you to 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 Hey, every year you have to be recertified on this subject matter because this is important, even though you've been doing it for years, even though, but because there may be something that you're missing. And the reality is, I think when, when we as believers and as Christians, before we launch people out outside of our churches and trying to do evangelism, we need to make sure people are equipped and understand how to bring people to Christ. Amen. And even though you may say, hey, I've been a Christian for years, I know how to do it, there's nothing wrong with going back and talking about it again. What's going on, Sister Elise? Thank you. Thank you for all the congratulations. So one of the things I want to do is talk about the, the, the kingdom map. The kingdom map is Romans 10 and 9. This is how you enter the kingdom of God. And many people, we don't really look at that map. Now here, for me, you know, you probably hear me say every time we do invitation, hey, if you want to come to God, uh, you know, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe God. I do this every Sunday, every time I'm teaching to try to get even extension, the uh, invitation, excuse me, the, uh, and extending the offer to the kingdom. But what does it really mean? And I think it's one thing to say it to people, but you have to be able to explain the map. In other words, I can give you a map and say, hey, here's the map, read the map. But some people need direction. There's a difference between giving someone a map and giving somebody direction, and they need both. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to discuss um, these scriptures, Romans 10, 9 through 13, and get an understanding. And if you already have the understanding, that's fine, but there's nothing wrong with a recertification. There's nothing wrong with coming back and getting a refresher. Amen? And, and here's the thing. This is going to be my goal every year. We will teach Romans 10 and 9 every year. This will be something that I will teach, preach every year because I want to make sure it's embedded in us. I want to make sure it's, it's connected with us because it's so important and valuable when we start trying to bring people to Christ. Amen? So, Romans 10 and 9 uh, is, I believe, Romans is written by Paul. And Paul is discussing the way to the kingdom. And it's discussing the way how to get to heaven. Who's going to go to heaven? And one of the things you have to understand is that before you, the, the one of the ways to get saved, there has to be a word preached. It has to be the word of God. They have to hear the word of God, have to understand of the history and who Jesus is. But now, what do I do? A person, you meet a person in the street, you talk to him about Jesus, you talk to him about Jesus, you talk to him about your church and all that. But what happens when a person decides they want to accept Jesus Christ and they ask you, what am I supposed to do? And one thing you, you should not be doing if it's a Tuesday or Monday, say if it's during the week, and somebody says, hey, I want to become a believer. I, what do I need to do? The answer is not, you should come to church Sunday. That is not the answer. Hey, Amen. You should come, because now you got, if it's Tuesday, you got Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so you got four or five days. What happens if something happens to this person? What happens if this person dies? So when somebody comes to you and asks, what must I do to be saved? 
you have to be able to respond to that as a Christian. You don't, you don't uh, uh, have to be, and I get it, Kim, knowing for yourself, but you, as a, as a Christian, you got to be able to explain to that. You know, you got to be able to explain what is the process of becoming saved. Every believer should know this. They should not be going to the preacher, uh, wait till Sunday. Every believer should know this map and know this scripture and how to explain this scripture to a person if they meet you somewhere and say, hey, I want to I want to become I want to get saved. I, I've been hearing about this Jesus. I've been coming to church because what happens if you don't can't get a hold of Pastor Slick? Or, for example, what happens if you can't get a hold of uh, uh, Pastor Ronica because she's at she's at the hospital with a dog with our daughter having a baby? You can't get a hold of somebody. So as a believer, you have to be able to explain that. You have to be able to explain that to a person. So this is what we're going to do today. So the first thing you got to tell them, it says, listen, Romans 10 and 9 is a great scripture. It's very uncomplicated. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. What does that mean? What does that mean? What it means is this. First, when you say, I confess with my mouth that the Lord is Jesus, what I'm saying is, and what you got to explain to them is saying that I'm saying that I am admitting and I am submitting, admitting and submitting that anything that Jesus tells me to do, I'm going to listen. That I, I am fully committed to Jesus Christ, period. It means no matter what my friends say, what my, my co-workers say, or what my pastors say, when I say Jesus Christ is Lord, that means I am committing. I like that. I'm admitting. And I'm submitting and I'm committing my life to Christ. That would that mean that Jesus is that whatever Jesus needs me to do, whether it's read the word, whether it go to church, y'all, that's what I'm going to do. And people need to understand that it's not. And you have to say this. You have to say this. You have to confess this and say it. But but it can't not just be lip service because it got to come from the heart because it also connected to it that believe your heart that God raised him from the dead. So not only you need to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, but you got to believe in the in the salvation story, the purpose of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. So that's something you have to believe by faith. You got to say, hey, I believe that Jesus died for my sins and um, was crucified, and three days later he got up. Real simple. Real simple. Do you believe that in your heart? And 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 you gotta understand whatever's in the heart will come out the mouth. So if somebody say a lot of people are gonna say, Lord, Lord, but they're far from God. But the initial intent is where's your heart at when you're saying this? Do you have faith when you're saying this? So so basically when you say it, like, yeah, Karen, you're admitting it, you're committing, you're submitting, and you're committing. So those are the things you're doing when you confess Jesus Christ Lord, and when you believe in your heart. Because here's the thing. That's what separates the resurrection is what separates us from other faiths. Paul says that if, if, if there was no resur resurrection, then our preaching would be in vain. So the resurrection is what separates our faith, what separates our belief, that we believe that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was dead and he got up from the grave. So that's what you have to be able to explain to them. And they may like, how's that do that? By the power of God. God raised them from the dead through the power of God. You have to be able to explain that. Now, they might ask, they might try to go in deeper, but that's when they need to get into the scripture. But hopefully, because there's a difference where people are challenging your faith. Now, also understand the difference between when somebody's challenging your faith and or they have an authentic uh, desire to become a Christian. Also remember that because a person who has an authentic desire to be a Christian, they're not going to be trying to question you and, 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 and try to test you. Understand that. So try the spirit by the spirit. So, but if the Holy Spirit is leading them to say, hey, I want to, I want to uh, connect with Jesus. I want to become a part of the kingdom. They're not going to be coming back. Well, how did God do this? What did, that's, not, that, that's people who are trying to call them, um, even in certification classes I teach, we call what is called sharpshooters. And what a sharpshooter is, a person, they know the answer, but they try to chat, see if you know the answer. That's not what we're talking about. You don't have to deal with those people. Uh, don't try to go back and forth with those people. These are people. We're talking about people who really want to know Jesus. Amen? 
And that's the conversation. So now let's, I just want to make sure I'm clear with that. Because there are some people out here who are just trying to challenge the faith and trying to challenge your what your belief system is. That's not trying to get to know Jesus. That, they're just trying to challenge. So, But try the spirit. Use your spirit of discernment to know that. But there are people out there that really want to be saved. Really want to, what do I need to do? What must I do to be saved? So then you got to explain to them. You can't stop there. So he said, but because Paul even explains this. He said, for with the heart, one believes into righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. He explains this. So Paul tells us what you should do in verse 9. And he explains in verse 10 why you're doing it. He said, you need to confess Jesus Christ the Lord with your mouth. Believe with your heart that God written in head. Because the heart, with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. So, so basically, you have to believe it in your heart, but you have to say it at your mouth. In other words, you cannot be a secret Christian. Ooh. If you're not willing to share openly with your mouth that you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you're not you it, it, it's, you you're not operating in the kingdom kingdom map. So you can't say, now don't get me wrong, even if you get saved in your own house, you're by yourself, you accept Jesus Christ, but eventually you got to confess that publicly. Amen. You got to say it. You can't fake it. You got to say it. Lord, I accept you in my life. Lord, I, can, I believe you are my Lord. I serve you. And I believe God raised you from the dead. I believe that in my heart. So you got to believe, right, Karen, you got to believe and then you confess that. Because guess what? Don't we speak what we believe? Don't we do that? And on other side, what we believe in something, we talk about it. If we believe in something, y'all. We'll talk about it. If you believe, how many of you, let's be honest, you believe that you're right about a certain thing, you're going to keep talking until you convince other folk that you know what you're talking about. So believe and then confess. So, but it all comes in the heart. But this is what I love about it. Let's go to verse 11. Understanding who can do this? Who can accept Jesus Christ? Who can become saved? And it says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. Many times, many times, Pastor Brown, we have a tendency to only minister to our own demographic group. Y'all know where I'm going with this. Uh, we think uh, only certain people should be have the right to be saved. We do that. There are a lot of people that have the audacity uh, to think only certain people can be saved. Certain demographic groups, certain um, certain people, certain people. There's a lot of people that think that, y'all. So, but here's the problem. When you look at this map, there's no roadblocks. It's a straight path. There, and what we try to do, we try to add to the map, y'all. There's nowhere in this text that says you have to be perfect before God will give you salvation. There's nowhere in this text that says, listen, listen, well, believe on him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jews and Greeks for the same Lord over his, all is rich and, and to all who call upon him. So it, it, it's not specific on who can call on God. And that's the problem, I believe, what has happened in the church is that we're trying to dictate who can go to the kingdom and who can't. Who, who, who has the right to accept Jesus Christ and who doesn't? My, this is my thing. I think if we give people the directions and give them the map, I think God knows how to navigate and, and separate who's really for him or not. But we we have a tendency, there are certain groups we will not even speak to. Sometimes we won't speak to people who, who don't look like us in our same color. We won't even talk, try to share with people who have a different lifestyle than us. Because we feel there's no hope. But the reality is that if you believe in Jesus Christ, and, you, and how, is it, how is it that you can believe that Jesus resurrected after death, but you can't believe that he can't save anybody? We put, we have to stop putting limitations on God's love and his salvation and his grace. 
Amen. We have to quit putting limitations on that. And who are you to decide who you decide you wanted to give people the map to? Amen. And the problem is sometimes, uh, think about it. If I'm lost and I ask you for direction and I'm at the gas station, I ask you for direction. Hey, man, I'm lost. Can you help me how to get here? Your response should be, man, you lost. You all out the way. No, dude, I already know that I'm lost. I need you to help me get where I need to go. We don't need to talk about how I got lost. Amen. We don't need to talk about how I missed the wrong, what turn I missed. No, I, I'm just asking you to get me to where I'm going. And the problem is people are coming to us. They're lost. But what we want to do is we want to attack why they're lost. We want to say, well, how did you get lost? No, they didn't. No, we got to get them the directions. They already know they lost. They already know where they are in their life. And we have to be able to. The problem is what I discovered, Sister Kim, is that the reason we do that and we attack people how they got lost because we don't even know the direction of Jesus ourselves. We don't even know the map ourselves because guess what? We're not being recertified. We're not always going back to the text because to be honest, I don't care how saved you are. How much, um, how much seminary you have, every now and then we need to go back to the text and say, hey, Lord God, I need to have a better understanding than I did last year of how to help people get to the kingdom. See, stop focusing on why they're lost. Stop focusing on where they are and start focusing on how you can get them where they need to be. Amen? I don't care what they've been through, what they've done. The requirement is, hey, if you want to have a better life and you want Jesus to fix your life, you need to accept him as your Lord. Believe God raised him from the dead. Period. Period. Once you get a belief, once you understand who Jesus is, once you get connected with Jesus, Jesus will lead them the rest of the way. Your job is to get them there and get them the map and, and explain the map and the blueprint. Because that's what it says. Because it says, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It is a straight, it is a, you had to be straight, and it say you had to be Baptist, and it has to say you had to be cogent, and it say you had to be Catholic, and it say you had to grow up in church, or you had to be deacon, pastor, it said for whosoever calls on the name of the Lord. We do not have to, we do not have to, uh, 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 what's the word I want to say? We don't have to block people and distinguish who, because the Bible said, for whosoever calls on his name. Whoever calls on his name. It doesn't make a difference how you feel about an individual. It don't feel a, make a difference how you feel about a certain demographic group. It don't make a difference how you feel about uh, the people, what color they are, what age they are. It said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, the Lord said, whoever calls on me. It's open access. Yes, the invitation is for everyone who wants to be saved, at least. So we got to stop trying to put restrictions on how, what people need to do. People don't. People don't have to. You, we, we put so many stipulations where you, if you don't tithe, you can't be saved. If you don't live like this, you can't be saved. Man, let me tell you something. If that was the truth, let's be honest. Let's be honest. If, and let's get me transparent, y'all. If that was the truth, none of us would be saved. Let's just be honest. If that was the truth that you had to be like this to be saved, you got to be perfect. You got to be a, if that was the truth, none of us would be saved. None of us. Yeah, I know some of you people don't like this kind of preaching, but I'm just being real. I'm just trying to preach real. But we have to keep going back to the text. We have, there's nothing wrong. No matter, we're not that so saved and so holy that we can't go back to some of the basic scripture. Like some of the basic scripture, love your neighbor, love God, love your neighbor. Amen. For God so the love of the world that he gave his only begotten son. His job wasn't to condemn us. His job was through, through him that we shall be saved. Simple scripture. We got, I know you might say it's simple, but every now and then we need to go back to it. We got to go back to it. And we got to teach people. We got to go to people. There are people who are hungry for the word. There are people there. I, I get it. Yeah. The church is declining, but not every, but here's the thing, but the kingdom is not. The church may be declining. The building may be declining, but the kingdom is not. 
We still got to be about, if you're not going to be about church business, we still need to be about kingdom business. Period. And that's what, I, that's my goal to teach. If you're a part of the move church, we're going to teach you, man. We're going to teach you how to be an impact on people. We're not going to teach you how to condemn people. We're not going to try to make people feel bad or whatever. Hell, I already know. Did I just say hell? <laughs> so hell, I already know that I'm lost. I already know that I'm lost. So I don't need you telling me how bad I am. But tell me who I can connect with to get better. Tell me who I can connect with. And the only person that I can connect with or a person can connect with to become better is Jesus Christ. Don't give people your opinion. Give them Jesus. Give people Jesus. Give people uh, a chance. That's the thing. Give people a fighting chance to get to heaven. Give people a chance, man. Me telling you what you're doing wrong. You're an adulterer. You be lying all the time. Okay, that doesn't help. You still a, because even if I tell you you're a liar, you're still a liar. That don't change nothing. Oh, we don't want we don't want people we don't want gay people coming to our church because they're a bad influence on kids or whatever. Man, that's not your business. That's between them and God. But if somebody has who's had, but if somebody comes to you with with a different sexuality than you, that's not that's not the opportunity to talk about their sexuality. They're coming to you about Jesus. Then that could man. Let me tell you something. I'm not talking to no adultery. If somebody say, well, you got to stop sleeping with people. No, what I'm going to tell you is, listen. I'm not sure what's going on with your life, and I don't understand what, where how, where your life has gotten out of control. But this is what we can do. I can introduce you to Jesus because I know a man who was resurrected from from the grave, who died because he loved you, despite of who you are. And guess what? And I believe if you accept him, make him your Lord, which means that you'll follow him. I believe eventually he will lead you to a better place, and you'll be a better person. That's what I believe. So this is your recertification, y'all. I'm done. Uh, come on, let's give God a hand, praise. Uh, this is your recertification on the kingdom map, on how you need to go out. This is your recertification for the year of 2022. And go, let's, 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 let's bring folks to Christ, man. Let's, 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 uh, let's be uh, diligent. Let's be diligent, man. Uh, when people come to us, and, and there's nothing wrong when people come to your problem. You ask them, hey, do you know Jesus Christ? Do you know your Lord is saved? Do you know Jesus Christ? If they say, no, I'm not interested. Okay, cool. And we're going to talk about this next Sunday at church. How to, how to keep your kingdom character even when people reject you. We're going to talk about that next Sunday. I'm going to talk about that. Because a lot of us as Christians, when people reject us and don't go to our church, and don't want to listen to our pastor, we get just as ignorant. <laughs> we just get just as ignorant as the world. So I'm I'm gonna I'm talk about that next week, next Sunday when we get to Sycamore Park. But listen, before we leave, I'm going to extend this invitation, and I do it every week, same week. Uh, if you want to accept Jesus Christ, all you do is confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, believe God raised him from the dead. The Bible says you shall be saved. I'm not asking you don't have to do no backflips. You don't have to even speak in tongues. The bottom line is, I want you to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You don't even have to join our church or join anybody at church to do that. Uh, secondly. This is a church recruiting announcement. I want you to come, uh, if you don't have a church home, I believe once you become saved, and if you are saved, you should be a part of a church fellowship. Amen? Uh, you don't have to go to church to become a Christian, but Christians should go to church. Uh, we invite you to be a part of the Move Church, got to move, to be a disciple of our ministry uh, as a pastor. No, I'm not perfect, but I will challenge you. I will challenge you. I want you to be better. I want you to be better than who you was yesterday. We're not, and, and, and we, we have a great fellowship, great group of people. We're doing great ministry this year. Uh, so wherever you are in your life, if you're trying to navigate something or where you are, come talk to us. Come talk to us. Come talk to us. Send me an inbox. Send me a message. Come out to Sycamore Park. We'll be at Sycamore Park next week at 9 o'clock. Uh, 9 o'clock. We have a great service. So we'd love for you to be there. So listen, that's all I have. Uh, Y'all stay safe out there. Uh, stay safe out there. This COVID is running wild. Uh, continue to pray for my family. I continue to pray for you. Uh, pray for those. Hey, sister, at least make sure you're supposed to be texting me somebody's cash app because I owe somebody some money. So um, I asked a burger 
a hamburger basket, man. I've been eating like crazy since my wife been gone, man. Pray for me, y'all. Pray for me. What's going on, Sister Denise? So listen, have a good week. I'll see y'all uh, next Sunday. We probably won't start Bible study again until around February. Um, I'm just trying to put some things together on how we're going to launch out and get some things done. I got some special things I want us to do, uh, but I'm just trying to put some things together. So listen, let's go to God in prayer. Oh, also, lastly, if you'd like to sow a seed, tithe into our ministry, you can do that at our cash app at dollar sign got to move, dollar sign got to move. Or you can send us something in, uh, to P.O. Box 2022, Cold Pepper, Virginia, 22701. Listen. Uh, I don't have a certificate, but consider yourselves recertified. Go out there and do great work. I love you. God bless you. Father God, Lord, we thank you. I ask for a special covering of everyone that's here today, Father, everybody that's has connected with us, Father God. I pray for their safety as they go and they come. Father God, I pray for my daughter. I lift her up, lift up her baby, Father God, that they're healthy. And through this process, I know it was painful, Father God, but sometimes... Uh, pain just is, is a uh, representation of what's to come that you're about to give a blessing in. Lord, I love you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.